Is common law God's law? Some people think common law is our path back to freedom. Others even refer to it as God's law. So what is it? And is it constitutional? I'm constitutional attorney Katherine Henry. For more than 20 years, I've been fighting for the underdog. But since COVID began, I've devoted all my time and efforts to fighting against government tyranny and educating and empowering the public. So welcome to our next episode of Restore Freedom Weekly. Some people think common law is our path back to freedom. Others even refer to it as God's law. So what is it? And is it even constitutional? So common law is literally unwritten judge-made law from U.S. courts and ancient England courts. Yes, you heard me right. Common law is literally unwritten, judge-made law from not only American courts, but Old English courts as well. Yikes. If you don't believe me, though, take a look at Black's Law Dictionary or law.cornell.edu or even legaldictionary.thefreedictionary.com or thelawdictionary.org or even dictionary.law.com. Yes, pretty much anywhere that you can Google to get an answer about what common law is. But even state laws, like Florida Statute 2.01, recognize that common law is judge-made English law. So what does the Constitution say about common law? Interestingly enough, the U.S. Constitution does not mention common law anywhere in its original part. In fact, the only place common law is mentioned is in the Seventh Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which simply guarantees our right to a trial by jury as long as the amount in controversy exceeds $20. So, states. Let's look at those. Most states refer to common law in their state constitutions or statutes. Some of them state the common law will remain in effect as long as it is consistent with the U.S. and state constitutions and federal and state law. But let's look at this a little bit more in depth. How can unwritten, judge-made law be constitutional? The U.S. Constitution, Article 4, Section 4, guarantees us a Republican form of government where we the people elect representatives to do the day-to-day -day functions of government, but we the people maintain sovereign authority. We the people cannot maintain that sovereign authority if we are not explicitly told what law there is even going to be used to regulate us. Therefore, Unwritten law does not comport with our constitutional republic. Sure, case opinions are generally themselves written, but where? Now, if you're not an attorney, that might be a challenging question, but quite frankly, admit it, even if you are an attorney or a paralegal, that's still a challenging question and it's a complicated answer. U.S. Supreme Court cases have 11 official reporters. You have the United States reports. Those are from 1875 to the present day. But then you have the Wallace reporter. Those are from 1863 to 1874. You have the Blacks reporter, 1861 to 1862. Yes, it was very short-lived. Howard is a 17-year period of time. Before that was Peters, before that was Wheaton, before that Cranch and Dallas. But you also have the Supreme Court reporter that has cases from 1882 to the present and the lawyer's edition from 1790 to the present. And lastly, you have United States Law Week that has cases from 1933 to the present. But there's 13 other federal court types, each that are reported differently. That includes the Court of Appeals and Circuit Courts, Temporary Emergency Court of Appeals, U.S. Court of Appeals for the Federal Circuit, U.S. Court of Federal Claims, U.S. Court of International Trade, 
district courts, bankruptcy courts, judicial panel on multi-district litigation, tax court, U.S. Court of Appeals for Veterans Claims, U.S. Court of Appeals for the Armed Forces, Military Service Courts of Criminal Appeals. Now, nowhere is it compiled all together as the law. You just have to look individually for where these cases are, depending on what you're looking for and what time period you want to reference. State courts. Well, that's a whole other ball game. Each of those typically have a state supreme court, a court of appeal or courts of appeal, circuit courts and district courts. And where are those cases reported? Well, that depends based on that particular state. So 50 different variations there. But let's jump back into the main parts of the Constitution, aside from the issue of it being a constitutional republic where we retain the ultimate control and authority, we need to look at the legislative powers or the power to make laws. That's found in Article 1 of the U.S. Constitution, and that power is specifically given to the legislative body at the federal level, that's Congress. That's a far cry from the judicial powers that are found in Article 3 of the U.S. Constitution, where the judicial branch, or specifically the United States Supreme Court, has the powers over the judicial functions of our government. So, by the very terms of our Constitution, judge-made law does not comport with our separation of powers. But we also have to look at another concept, and that's found in the United States Constitution 5th and 14th Amendments, and that's the due process of law requirements. The due process of law requires notice and opportunity to be heard. Unwritten law does not comport with this due process requirement to be given notice. If it's unwritten, how would you have notice? And with common law, or case law, as it's sometimes called, for every case you find to support one point, you're going to be able to find another case to support just the opposite point. And sometimes they are both still binding precedent, or perhaps neither is binding. So how does that lead to a clear articulation of the law? It doesn't. Therefore, common law does not provide notice, let alone opportunity, to be heard. So, common law. It's unwritten, judge-made law from U.S. courts and Old English courts. But unwritten law does not comport with our constitutional republic. Judge-made law does not comport with our separation of powers. Unwritten law does not comport with this due process requirement to be given notice. And the often contradictory cases don't provide proper notice of a clear articulation of case law. So what is the law? Well, Article 6 of the U.S. Constitution says that the United States Constitution is the supreme law of the land. But check out Season 1, Episode 10, to learn more about what other laws are, like statutes and ordinances, and what other things are not laws, like executive orders and resolutions. So what is a case opinion, then? It is the law of just that case between just those parties arising from just those facts litigated. In other words, it's just the record of the outcome of an individual dispute, whether civil or criminal. Want to interact on this important topic? Comment on this video or call in the second Tuesday of the month at noon Eastern Standard Time to participate in our live constitutional discussion. Make sure to like, follow, subscribe, and share. And remember, together we can restore freedom.